Well, you look as if you expected me to come home to an appointment with a grim reaper. I'm sorry. I, I didn't quite know what to expect when they, they rushed you off like that. They wouldn't even tell me what was going on at the hospital. Mm. Well, it's encouraging to know that they carry out some instructions in that sterile maze. Uh, those syringes, those stethoscopes, those, uh... You mean you told them not to tell me what was going on? Well, I thought you had enough to worry about, managing your first business venture. How is it you're not back at the garage now? Because I came home to see you. I was worried. I rushed home. I'll see you later. Rodney, I hope you know I wanted to see you. From a safe distance. What does that mean? Norman and I saw you looking out of your hospital window when we were in the parking lot. Can't a man look out of the window? You know, I made one, one mistake since I moved into this house. That's asking you questions you didn't want to answer. You'd pull rank and, and that was the end of the conversation. That's not much of a relationship, is it? I think that's rather a severe analysis of the situation, Rodney. Is it? You know, in just the few months that Norman has worked with old Eli Carson, I think they have a better relationship than you and I. Well, evidently, I owe you an apology. I didn't know that I made you feel that way. I assure you, it was not intentional. Look, I, I know you've got a lot on your mind, but so do I. Can't we talk about these things together? All right. Let's talk. You belong in this house, Rodney. And this is your home. Well, if it is my home and you tell me I belong here, then I want some, some answers to some questions. If somebody breaks in and tears up my mother's portrait, I want to know about it. I don't want Mrs. Cord to tell me that you're you're indisposed, that you're not going to be down for dinner, that I can't see you for breakfast tomorrow morning. I don't want to come home and find that you've taken off for a hospital and locked yourself in, and there's no way for me to reach you. I've had a lot of things on my mind lately, Rodney. I didn't realize you'd be so upset. Yes, it does upset me. Don't you think I care what happens to my mother's portrait? Don't you think I care what happens to you? I didn't move back into this house because you made some sort of deal with my father. Rodney, I only did what I had to do. So did I. I went to that hospital because I was concerned. I wanted to know whether you were going to live or die. Grandfather, do you think I care about wills or money? I care about the man who is my grandfather. A man who stood up for me at my trial. A man who just as easily could have disowned me. You made a choice. I love you for it. Do you understand that? I love you for it. Not this ridiculous house or the name of Peyton or money. You. Rodney. I see me and you. My mind, my tastes, my needs and my talents. My peculiar, offbeat way of looking at the world. When I was in that Boston clinic, I made a decision. I decided that during your trial by fire, I'd observe you. Oh, I could have stayed put. Simply telephoned your father every day for the progress reports. But I came to Peyton Place to see you, to watch you struggle, to find out if there was anything in you. <laughs> you were magnificent. You were a Peyton. I saw in you a chance to continue my life in my world. After I'm gone, the last desperate chance of an old relic. Don't fail me, Rodney. If there are things that trouble you in this house, don't pursue them. They're shadows. You'll never be able to touch them. Trust me, Rodney. Have faith in me. My instincts, months ago, were right. You are me. We're a biological fact. Take my hand, Rodney. Trust me.
Why did you tell Stephen I was seeing Rodney? Well, aren't you? No, no, I'm not. Not the way you made it sound. All I did was tell him what I saw. What you saw were two people talking. But that wasn't what you tried to make Stephen believe. You deliberately tried to poison his mind against me. Come now, Betty, I think you're really blowing this up out of all proportion. I think I know why you're doing this. You wanted to give Stephen something else to think about. Something besides the things that have been happening in this house lately. What I told Stephen is precisely what he should be thinking about. About what's happening in this house between you and your ex-husband. You know there's nothing between Rodney and me anymore. But you'll use anything as long as it works for you. Now that's your specialty, isn't it, Betty? Using what works for you? You've already proved that you'll throw in your lot with anyone who gives you access through that front door. If not Rodney, then Stephen. Why are you doing this, Hannah? You've never wanted Stephen before. Why clutch at him now? He's made a life of his own. Why try to take that away from him, too? Don't try to turn this into a hair-pulling match between the bride and the mother-in-law. There's much more to it than that. How much do I know? Enough. I know that you were so ashamed of your past that you were afraid to look in Stephen's eyes and see it. So you kept him in the dark all his life. You raised him on half-truths and deceits. This is my home, Betty. I don't intend to stand here and be vilified by the likes of you. You didn't belong here as Mrs. Rodney Harrington. And you don't belong here as Mrs. Stephen Court. They're brother and sister, aren't they, Hannah? Anne Howard is Stephen's sister. And Brian Colby was their father. Does Stephen know? Don't you think it's about time he should? Don't you think you had better stay out of this? I'm not an outsider anymore, Hannah. I'm married to Stephen, and I don't intend to stand by and let my husband live a lie any longer. Now, he's entitled to know his birthright, whatever it is. You let him stand at Brian Colby's grave without even telling him he was burying his own father. And you haven't told him, have you? Not yet. Not ever. Not... Not if you love him. You say you know enough. Well, that's only half true, Betty. You know just enough to be the instrument for Stephen's destruction. And that's just what you will be if you tell him. Don't play Pandora. Don't be tempted to open that box. Because believe me, there's a reason why this house is locked. <laughs> be upset, and I thought you'd like to know he doesn't blame you, Anne. He has to. He doesn't. I don't know what what made me do it. I I just had to go over to him and start talking on and on about my father and everything. I don't know why. Is he in pain? I don't know. I can't tell. It was a terrible fall. Those steps and the boat. He might have been killed. He told me when you're blind, you always have great fear of an accident like that. Oh, I'm sure he didn't use the word accident. Well, I can't be positive, but I think he did. He was being sarcastic. No, he wasn't. He must have been. I was there. He really doesn't blame me. I'm positive about that. 
If you want my opinion, I don't think he even blames you for what happened at the bluff years ago. Just a feeling, nothing more. Nothing more? Nothing that I can explain. You see, I've, I've spent a lot of time with Chris the last few days, and I've come to know him quite well. And if he blamed you, I think I'd know. I'll be back. Where are you? Here. It wasn't your fault. But, but I upset you. I, I shouldn't have told you all those things about my father. I, I had no right to pile all my troubles it up with you. It wasn't your fault. Allison just told me that that's the way you felt, but I couldn't believe it. So that's why I came here to ask you myself. Oh, Chris, you don't know how much this means to me. You've asked, I've answered. Allison also said that, that you might be leaving Peyton Place. Is that true? Probably. Don't go. This is your town. You, you belong here even more than I do. If you're leaving because of me... I'm I, not. But you came back to spend a quiet summer in town, and every time you run into Stephen or me, we're always pestering you with questions. Stop it, will you? I just want to apologize. Well, just stop now and go, please. Just tell me one thing. Allison said that you don't think it was my fault the other time. Leave me alone. I have to know. No. But you don't understand how important this is to me. Go on. Get out. Chris. Now. Is that the Weber boy shouting? Yes, Doctor. I warned you to stay away from him. Miss Howard, you're fired. the continuing story of Peyton Place. You're saving yourself a lot of trouble by leaving here. I'm not going anywhere. All I really want is just to be Mrs. Stephen Court. It isn't that simple, is it? I'm not afraid now to admit that I know Anne didn't. Anne didn't do it.